music ministry is different from music industry. In music ministry, it's about rendering sacred service. First to God and then the people. The Levites in the Old Testament were called to minister first to God and his people. But in the music ministry, it's about rendering entertainment. Say entertainment. It's different. In music ministry, service is the mentality. Say service. In music industry, you have a celebrity mentality. So, when you are called to, called as a music minister, you have a servant's heart. But in the music industry, you have a celebrity mentality. In music ministry, it's about Jesus. Say it's about Jesus. In music industry, it's about the artist. The artist is the one in focus. In music ministry, it's about pleasing the Lord. In music industry, it's about pleasing the fans. Now, you... If you don't understand these things, then you act anyhow. In industry, it's about image. It's about your branding, your panache. But in ministry, it's about his name. His name is your brand. In industry, it's about CD sales, the charts, the hits. But in ministry, it's about his glory, the souls of men, and the kingdom. If you want to clap, clap. So, how you see yourself determines how you act. So, if you have a celebrity mentality, then you will have a pay me, I want to charge mentality. Because, you know, it's about you. But if you have a ministry mindset, you know that you are called, you are a servant who is called to minister, to wait on him and wait on his people. So how you see yourself is important. A strong sense of your calling influences your attitude. So I'm going to share a bit of my testimony, then I'll give 10 quick points of why I live the way I do. You know, I started out in 1991 playing the trumpet for the first time. And from the first day, I began to blow the horn. So I knew, my, my parents knew that the hand of God was upon me. My father bought the horn from the first day I was playing. And then I began to practice, uh, got into bands, and jazz bands, and you know, I began to grow in skill and in an ability. So, you know, I started doing a lot of mainstream music. However, I was still in church. Anyway, to cut the long story short, I, I joined a church, the RCCG, City of David, and I met a man who was to change my life forever. And that's why I always beg music ministers, you must have a pastor. You must understand, if you go to Ezekiel 28, 14, the Bible says that Lucifer was going up and down. There's something about music ministers that making them go up and down. Going up and down. Walked up and down. And one of the first things that begins to happen to you when God wants to change your life is he brings you under the wings of a leader. Tell somebody, stop going up and down. Get some covering. So I met a man who, by the grace of God, shaped who I am, who emphasized character, who said, who said to me, he said, I don't, I said, he said, you are very gifted, you are anointed, but I don't care if fire comes out of your head. If you don't have character, you won't last. So for years, people will come to say, oh, let's get him out. This boy is amazing. Let's take him to the U.S. He's so good. Let's get him to convention. He said, the time will come, but now he's not right for that. 
and I will go to the music room and, and I will just feel, why is this man stopping me from going out? Now I know that if I had gone ahead of my time, I wouldn't be here today. I bless God for my late father and the Lord Pastor S. Comfort. He emphasized character. So he said to me, Nathaniel, the hand of God is upon you. What are you going up and down doing? Because, you know, I, I was serving in church, but I would do gigs. I would play here. I would play in clubs. I mean, I was still a good boy, but I had a love for music and jazz. So I wanted to play jazz music, and we weren't playing that in church. So my excuse was that I want some more intellectual music, more improvisational music, something to help me develop. But he said to me, what you are carrying is more than playing around. He said, every time you play the trumpet, I cry. I don't know why. I didn't even know. You see, you can have the hand of God on your life and not even know it. So I would go to the music room and just laugh away with my friends. I said, look at this man. Your children are abroad. You want me to stay here and be playing in this church? But one day, by the mercy of God, I had a personal encounter. You see, the way you are behaving, the way you are behaving is because you've not had an encounter with the Lord. When Christ is revealed to you, when you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost, it changed everything. And one day, in number two of Obi me, when I felt the Lord was drawing me, I was just playing the piano alone in the room and I felt like a blanket resting on me. I felt this holy awe. I took my hands off the keyboard and ran outside. I knew it was something special. It was holy, but I was afraid. So I understand when people say, when I saw the Lord, I fell as dead. And later that evening, a man who I don't know a pastor, not, not, not who I don't know, I mean a family member, but who never had my phone number. I was driving between CMS and Bodicam, called me. I was wearing a white shirt, driving a Kia car. He called me and I picked up the phone while I was driving, even though I wasn't supposed to pick. And then he said to me, Nathaniel, thus saith the Lord, from today the hand of the Lord is upon you. Conduct yourself accordingly. 